Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Natasha Denona Circle Loco Palette. Let's get into it. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup that comes out on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And if you're new here, you're just finding me. I'm an avid Natasha Denona fan, especially with her eyeshadow palettes. I review every single eyeshadow palette she's come out with. And I've done that for like the last three years, pretty much. So I'm pretty well equipped when it comes to knowing about Natasha Denona's formulas, comparing them to previous ones, all of that. Anyways, so if you haven't heard of this guy. I saw a sneak peek of this like I feel like two months ago. I've known about this palette for a while because you guys are super sleuths and send them to me. And here it is. She finally is revealed. This is the Circle Loco palette. It is currently available at the Natasha Denona website, Sephora, and Beautylish. I ordered this on pre-order from Natasha Denona. I think for me that's the quickest way to get it shipped as well as pre-ordering is nice because you don't have to beat the rush, you know? Of course there's always advantages as well to doing other <laughs> websites, but this guy is limited edition in case you were wondering. So normally her limited edition palettes are actually limited edition, but they do usually take a while to sell out. If you are interested in this palette, I would say the Sephora VIB sales coming up, but I would like stay up till midnight that night because I imagine this is gonna be one of the first items to go. Lots of people are holding off, waiting for this to go on sale. So no pressure, but <laughs> that's kind of what I've noticed. And from your guys' comments as well. So let's get into the details of this guy. So the box it comes in is also the same. This is $129, so it's not one of her more affordable ones. It has this beautiful... I mean, maybe not necessarily beautiful, but this fun pastel diamond patterned on the front. And it is that typical hard packaging where you can poke little pins through here and you can rearrange or move these into other palettes as far as the colors go. This has a 24 month shelf life and it is made in Italy. Comes with the mirror. This is all classic. I love how it stands up on its own so you can use it as a mirror on your desk. And then we are going to reveal the 15 shades right here. And as you can see, this is not for the neutral everyday girl. I know a lot of you are passing on this palette and I can tell you, even without testing this, I mean I have, but even without testing this, this wasn't going to be one of her more popular ones because it doesn't have everyday wearable colors. And I had been asking Natasha, the person personally. <laughs> I've been asking Natasha to bring us some color. She's been bringing us a lot of neutral palettes and she brought color. It wasn't necessarily the color I was thinking of. I was thinking more like neutral colors because Natasha has a way of creating colorful palettes that are still approachable. Not what I was talking about, but she came out with color, you know, and if you like color, you might like this. Anyways, <laughs> so I would say no, the color story is not personally my cup of tea, but I do enjoy a challenge. So formulations as far as what you're getting in here. There is only one cream to powder matte formula, which is right here. She's like tested this formula in a few different palettes. I think the Metropolis is when she's really nailed the formula down. So she only has one, but this is not a new formula, but it's like a newer one that she's still trying to push out for you guys to feel more comfortable with. The rest of the formulas, I would say, aren't anything that haven't been done before. Natasha has a history of playing with new formulas in every palette that she comes out with and them not being that great. You gotta commend Natasha for really wanting to be innovative and different with her palettes and textures, but sometimes she just, she, she doesn't get it. But this palette, I feel like it's all of her traditional normal colors and the quality in here is beautiful, I can say that. So in here, like I said, one cream to powder, five true mattes, and then there's gonna be nine shimmer to foiled kind of shades. Like I would say, Aerialist is foiled, Snow Cone is foiled, Razzle Dazzle has a little bit more glittery specks in there, as does Grim. I don't know, there's no satins in here. And there's probably like two regular shimmers, like Flip and Act, but the rest are like a foiled wet creaminess, which we love because Natasha Denona knows what she's doing with those. Um, I do wanna talk about the layout because one thing that I noticed immediately about this palette is that 
that it's probably not the most consumer friendly. Like if you don't know color theory, it's probably very confusing to the everyday person, kind of a chaotic palette. I'm not a big fan of the way that she laid this one out. She has an eye for laying out palettes, but I feel like she doesn't relay the message to her consumers very well because there normally is a thought process behind where she places colors where, but she doesn't share it enough to make it known. So I'm not sure why the colors are here. I'm very visual in that I like my colors to be ordered monochromatically and I feel like this could easily be reorganized in a way that's easy for you guys to understand. So if you do get this palette, my suggestion would be, you know, to make the blues, purples, make it go to the pinks and then finish this last row off with the warmer orange shades and it's going to be a game changer to you and it make it so much easier to apply the colors. The color families that she pushes here are pinks, oranges, and blues with purple hints to them as well. So blue family, warm family, and a pink family. So it... <laughs> In terms of color theory, there are some complementary colors going on, like blue and orange, so you want to be careful mixing them together. But for the most part, I feel like these colors go well together, but the way that she arranged them isn't necessarily that easy to understand if you don't have experience with color theory. So my biggest tip for that is to rearrange the colors, like I said, and I think the colors will make a lot more sense to you. So that's kind of my two cents on that. Let's get into the quality of these babies. Like I said, pretty much all of her good formulas in one palette. So I'm gonna get straight into the tutorial. You can see how I applied the colors and my tips and recommendations for applying the colors and how they perform, and then we'll be back. All right, so this is the look that we are going for today and what lashes. Woo, 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 okay. So for primer right now, just so you know, I only have some Too Faced Born This Way all over the eyelid. It's not set or anything. I'm taking a Refer 27 brush and we're going in with Cotton Candy. This is one of Refer's new launches that is coming up. So this brush will be launched March 20th if you are interested in this. I have another one from this launch that I'm going to use in today's look as I'm testing these brushes out. But you'll see I really like this shade because it has some depth to it. It looks like it would be really, really light light in the pan. It does add a nice depth, but I'm going to use this as the background color because we are using such deep shades on the lid. I want this to haze out underneath from those shades. So really buffer out up here. There we go. Just like that. Now there's a lot of color families going on in this palette. I wanted to play with the color family that usually would have the most trouble, which are the blues and purples. In particular, shades like this and the shimmer version as well are very difficult to work with. So I wanted to use those first. So we're going to take the shade Magic. This is an Isom S35. Now if you're really working with this palette and creating a very intricate kind of look, I would recommend to do your face makeup after. I like to live on the edge in my reviews because I really don't like to adjust how I do my makeup for eyeshadow if I can help it for reviews just so you know what to expect to happen. And this shade I like to pack it down as you see and now I'm slowly working it out. Now I really want a lot of the color on the lid. Now this shade I wouldn't say blends like butter like some shades would in this palette because of the nature of the shade and the types of pigments that are used to create a shade like this. But it is working out very nicely, especially if you go in little by little. I just kind of threw it on there just to show you, even if you don't go in little by little, you can see it's working out. It's not gonna be easy breezy beautiful like a brown shade might be, but it's relatively easy to work out for a shade of this nature. And you can see it's not looking patchy. It's holding that color and the vividness of this shade. And that's what I like to look for to see the true quality of a shadow. Because a lot of times with lower quality shadows, a shadow like this, would blend away. You'd say, oh, it applied easily and it's blending easily, but it blends away to a point where the shadow pretty much disappears. That's not the case with this shade, and that's not typically the case with Natasha Denona shadows, which is why she's so known for her amazing formula. And this is really, really good, especially with the nature of this shade. So I'm very happy with it. I'm gonna take a rougher number 26 brush, and I'm just going to start it right here in the outer corner, like so. This shade 
shade, again, is one that can cause issues in a lot of other palettes. It's basically the shimmer version of Magic because it can be really fall outy and not like to move around. That's normally how I notice these types of colors go. I'm going to use my finger. That's always the best way to apply shadows like these because these dark shimmers, if they get all over the face, it literally ruins the look. So you want to use a finger to have a little bit of control for packing on. So I'm just putting it on the lid right on top of the crease color that we used just where we place it on the lid. So I'm not blending this into the crease, but I want to get that depth that this creates. And when you pat it down with a finger, you're not gonna get as much fallout. You're gonna take your blending brush and work the edges into the matte shade. Sorry, it's probably annoying I'm not in the center. Just like that, can you see? Really easy, I think I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more. This has a bit of like a stickier texture, but I think that helps it stay on the lid. I would beat myself up if I didn't use the prettiest shade in this palette palette in this tutorial. So this is Aerialist and it's like a, a silvery lilac shade and I just did one swipe and look at this. This, my friends, single-handedly is why Natasha Denona has the rep that she has. This shade is incredible. It's so buttery and creamy. You only need the littlest bit to get a shine like this. So much so that I'm about to mute it down a little bit because it's too beautiful. It's too bright. So I'm going to take a little bit more of At, literally just a tiny bit, just to kind of fuse the two shades together. So we have an all over shimmery lid, but there isn't a harsh transition from this really light silvery shade to this deeper shade. And how you can help that transition is if you put a little bit of the silver above above where the dark color is and that's gonna help with that transition as well as open up the eyes so just like that you see how that made all of the difference i'm gonna put a little bit more depth on this eye how beautiful does this eye look now if i weren't testing colors for quality i would completely kind of repeat the steps on the lower lash line but i did want to get a little bit more acquainted with some other colors so i wanted to go into acrobat because this is the only cream to powder formula in this palette and this is not a new formula at this point but it came out with the metropolis palette that came out last year and it's been hit or miss with this formula she changed it a couple times and this formula seems to be the good version of the cream to powder kind of formula you can see it has a lot of color to it it's not losing the opacity so the intended purpose of this formula was that it was easy to build up and easy to blend out and she lost the pigmentation while trying to find the ease of use and I feel like she's found a happy medium with this formula because it's got pigment and it's easy to blend. The powder to matte is very nice and I'm going back in with Magic which is that original matte blue shade that we used in the upper crease just to kind of fuse those together. Next we're going into Razzle Dazzle. This shade is so pretty you guys. I was a little bit worried because I was a little bit hmm, by the swatches. It wasn't as like wet and creamy as Aerialist. It had to be pushed into the skin a little bit more to get the true color to show. So you will get fallout with it so I recommend using a finger to press the color down because I'm applying it to such a small area that's okay just right here I'm gonna blend this and the matte shades together and it's gonna create a purpley kind of look and this is gonna add a fun pop of color not that we needed an additional pop of color but boom okay and final touch I just did it to try the color I don't necessarily know that it should be placed here because it's a bit dark for my skin tone as a highlight color. We're gonna go into a snow cone right here, which is more of like a pastel blue, icy silver. I'm just gonna pop that right here. Again, you can see it's just a bit too dark to be a highlight, but we're making it work. How stunning, stunning is this look. All right, that's it. That's the tutorial for this look. Get some liner and lashes on, you're good to go. So I did really enjoy the application of these shadows and I hope with the tutorial you were able to see how these colors would mesh together and get some inspiration for looks. Now I am thinking about, I don't know if time will permit, but I'm trying to this week film another video of a couple more looks so this palette isn't as overwhelming. But if you like neutral looks, um, you're not gonna like this palette. I don't really recommend it for you. Uh, what's great about this palette is it's a great pop palette 
palette where all of these colors, literally every single one, if you put them all over your lid as a one and done shadow for a fun pop, it's going to look beautiful, especially in the summer. It makes it really easy in that way, but you're paying a lot of money for this to be an accent palette or a one and done shadow palette. If this was from her $60 size, I would say, you know what, this could be worth it to add some fun pops to your collection, but if you're not into color, this is $129. I'm not going to recommend it. If you get it, you're going to love the formula. I can tell you that. It's a beautiful formula. She has so many other great palettes that also have this formula that are in more wearable colors. And I mean, that doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. There really isn't a way with this palette to get an extremely wearable look without dipping into other palettes. And that's hard to justify for $129. But if you like color, I really feel like Natasha brought it. She brought these really interesting deep jewel tones as well as some pastels to really complete the look. There's interesting depths, there's interesting shades that are also unique, and most importantly, this is her good formula. I have not yet come across a dud in this palette, and if you're wondering why I only did one look, it's because I am so familiar with her formula. I can almost tell just by swatching what's going to be good and what's going to be bad and what is her original formula and that's what these do have. So if time permits, like I said, I do want to create more looks but this does get the thumbs up for me. If it's your color story, you're okay with spending $129. I think it's great. I would hold off to see maybe if you could get your hands on it for the Sephora sale. Is it my number one favorite Natasha Denona palette? No, I'm probably not going to use it that much but it's up there in quality so I will say that. That is how I'm going to finish up today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.